So it's no secret that the number one reason why people don't get into entrepreneurship or don't really do anything that they ever care about is fear. And that's logical. It makes no sense to go and pursue something if the downside to you is greater than the upside. That's never going to change. You're never going to get past this as long as you think like that. And I've thought about this a whole lot. And the reason why most entrepreneurs get started is something happens that makes the upside greatly outweigh the downside. So then they get started. And if you're afraid right now, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you don't have the ability to move forward just because your mind is screaming at you, no, you need to understand how to flip those barbells. You need to understand how to flip those weights that you have attached to things or it's never going to work. This is how you do it. So if you're worried about failure or confidence in yourself or you're just overall afraid, there's good news that that's pretty normal. And if you want to get past this, the solution is actually really obvious. It's, it's right in front of you. It's just sitting right there. And it's going to take me about five minutes to explain. But once you understand how it works, it's going to be very easy to remove if you want to remove it. That being said, if you have this problem and you can't focus on this for five minutes and you must go watch the latest political video on YouTube, that's bonkers to me. That's like walking into a room when you have a really, really bad disease and then being like, no, nah, I, I want to go see what Donald Trump is doing. I'll, I'll fix this later. But by all means. Anyways, so people always ask me on streams. People always ask me how I got over my fear. And I had a really unfair advantage I'm going to talk about here in a second. And to be honest, my answer to this question for the longest time is the same answer that most entrepreneurs and most people you see on YouTube or anywhere give. It's just to dismiss it. Or if, if I was watching a Dan Pena video and his solution is to just call someone the C word, which I suppose works because people seem to like him, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel that's the truth. I don't feel that's the right answer. And I feel that's a comp out because the reason why people don't get started is because logically in their head, the upside of becoming an entrepreneur doesn't outweigh the downside. And it's because if you really think about it, people's views on the downside are warped. And I want to show you how to get past this beyond just screaming at you or insulting you because that's dumb. If it was as easy as just manning up, there's lots of people that work really hard jobs, work crazy hours, do insane things just to get by. People are capable of manning up and doing the work. I don't believe that 99% of the population has no work ethic or won't, won't take a risk. Okay, people go and gamble all the time. Have you seen Vegas? People obviously are capable of taking risk in mass, mass amounts. So I don't believe that's the answer. And I think this is the answer right here. And I'm going to show you how this works. And first thing I want to do is explain to you how I got started and the unfair advantage I had. And then how fear and lack of confidence actually crippled me all over again. You're not immune to it once you become successful. And I want to point that out first and foremost. Then the next thing I want to point out is the main reason why you're probably afraid to get started. Why you probably have fear to take any risk. And you're not going all in on this if you've already gotten started. And that's probably why you're failing because you're not going all in. That's the whole reason why everybody gets sucked. They don't go all in. And then finally, I want to point out the big one, the big solution that you have to take in once you get past number one, and then it just becomes easy. It, it doesn't make sense not to do it at that point. And it becomes very, very easy to get past this, and you don't need to be called the C word to get started. You just do it. So let me explain. So what's going on when people are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs is this little equation right here. All right, so if I can pull up my chalkboard. What's happening is this. So here's the upside of being an entrepreneur, and here's the downside. Imagine it being like a barbell. Okay, we got weight right here, and we got weight right here. So when you're getting started, the downside has to weigh significantly less than the upside. That is just it, all right? Look, if this right here is 100 pounds, and you have 10 pounds right here in your head, if that's how you view it, it's not gonna work like that. You're not gonna do something where you basically view it as playing Russian roulette. And no amount of yelling, no amount of haikus, no amount of giving yourself positive reinforcement in the mirror is going to change this, it's just not. No amount of negative reinforcement, no amount of positive reinforcement is going to make you make an illogical decision if you think it's an illogical decision. That's just how it is. And so the only way to push yourself forward is to play with the inputs. But unless you understand this, you're going to get stuck again. And I'll explain to you how I got started. So when I was in the military, 
I, I didn't go into the military wanting to be an entrepreneur. When I was in high school, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't want to be a millionaire. I didn't believe I could be a millionaire. I never thought in a thousand years about starting a business. I never thought in a thousand years about any of that. And when I was in the military, what happened is the job I had, the people I work for, there's nothing wrong with the military. I suggest actually every young person who doesn't know exactly what they want to do, you should just go join the military. But the people I worked for, it was a very rough place to work. And there was a lot of weird stuff going on there. And I'm not going to get into it. I was just, I was in hell the last two years of the military. And a lot of it was self-induced. And I'm not going to go and point fingers and, and throw some rant right here. I'm going to say I was just in a really bad spot. And I desired, I craved the ability to have freedom and make my own choices. And I craved the ability not to live like this for the next four years of my life. I could not do it. I simply could not do it. Working as a Starbucks barista for the next 40 years of my life was a great alternative to this. So what happened is because of the massive amount of pain I was in and the frustration, this downside right here, leaving the military and taking a risk, taking out all my savings and trying to start a business, it was like 10 pounds, okay? And what I did when I was in the military is I built up enough income by freelancing and like writing blogs and, and starting my business a little bit that it got down to like five pounds. Like I had a little bit of money coming in when I left the military. But even when I got started, what happened right here originally is there wasn't much downside because I had money coming in. There was no real risk for me trying to start a business while I was in the money, military because I had money coming in. So the first thing I did is I eliminated the downside and then my anger and frustration and just inability to cope with the situation I was in. I was not gonna do this for the next 40 years of my life. My reenlistment was coming up and I had to make a decision. Am I gonna stay in and give up? And this isn't like the motivational, like am I gonna give up my dreams? I'm like, am I gonna give up on life? Am I gonna die inside for the next 40 years of my life? The next 20, that's usually the usual military enlistment, but you get the point. And my answer was no. So this weight right here was very, very low. And in the upside, if I fail, I'll just get a job as a Starbucks barista. I'll do that. That's no problem. I had extremely cheap rent lined up when I got out. It was like 500 bucks a month for me to live. Maybe not that low, but extremely low within like $200 of that. And the upside of having freedom after being in such a restrictive position for so long, the upside was like 100 pounds. And so there wasn't some magical haiku I told myself. Someone didn't come in my... Air Force dorm room and call me the C word to motivate me. I didn't read a Tony Robbins book. S simply the logical decision, the only no brainer decision was start a business, start a business. And even if the business fails, you have cheap rent and it's way better than where you're at right now. There's no downside. Just do it. And even when I was in the military, the downside of doing it was very low. You have to view it. You have to set up in your brain. You have to go and determine the things that are making the downside so high. And so, that's what happened, but I want to I want to point one thing out out there, and that's what happened. And the thing I want to point out though is that this doesn't stop until you become aware of this. It's going to catch you again. And what you must realize is that rich people are ten times more afraid than poor people. They're terrified all the time because what happens as soon as you go out there and let's put this barbell situation back up. All right, we got the downside over here got the upside again let me make sure my screen isn't covering that I do that all the time is this will reset because let's imagine you go and you get the three hundred thousand dollars per year but what then happens you go and get a house you go and get a car you go and probably start eating at nice restaurants and living a little bit going to the bar and spending a lot of money and once I got some traction I got to a point about 1.5 million a year I would say about a year and a half after I left the military. Granted, I had been working on my business for a long time in the military, so there's by no means that I get to 1.5 million in a year and a half. It's probably close to two and a half years. That being said, as soon as I got there, you know what my number one fear was? It was losing it. It was losing this. And so suddenly I became a slave to the money I was making and the things I was buying. And now granted, I lived very frugally. I lived in a one bedroom apartment for years when I was making multiple millions of dollars a year for years. I didn't get my first Lamborghini until I had multiple consecutive six hundred or six figure a month. What am I saying? $100,000 per month months. 
But why did I do that? Why, first off, why did I hesitate? Because I was afraid of losing it. I was afraid of losing it. But more importantly, what did I do with every single dollar I made? I kept it. I kept it. And I put it in the things, in material things. And I also saved it up and stockpiled it like Scrooge McDuck. And the result of that is I never really took big shots. And if I'd started market here on the companies I'm working on right now, back then, I'd probably be worth 100 to 200 million dollars right now. I'm not. I'm not. According to Google, I have a net worth of close to 17 to 20 million dollars. If you ask me, my, my net worth is six Arby's melts. That's not something you should be concerned of, and net worth is such a silly thing to go off of, really. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make right here is that as soon as I made the money, this whole entire thing happened again. Okay, but except the downside of going and taking risk and betting on myself more grew to 100 pounds. And the upside got to like 10 pounds. And so what happened? For years, I plateaued and I couldn't move forward. And what happens when you operate like this, you actually start heading backwards, even though you have the complete opposite intention. And so suddenly, what happens as soon as you make a little bit of money, this shit catches up with you right up again. So how do you escape fear? How do you get this confidence in yourself? I didn't have the confidence in myself. I couldn't get past the fear of doubling down and going all in that I have right now. I couldn't go and focus and I kept struggling. I kept trying to go out there and make myself more famous and make more businesses and stuff like that without really taking any real risk. And that plateaued me, it's, it kept me stuck. And so if you have a business right now, this is what's keeping you stuck probably. And I just wanna let you know that rich people are terrified. People that make $10 million a year, terrified, most of them, terrified. They can't go back. Every ounce of their being is spent trying to keep it there. They don't, they're so terrified of going back that they can't move forward. And that's the exact spot you are in right now if you're considering starting a business or entrepreneurship. So let's address why people feel these things. And there's two main reasons. And if you can eliminate these, I think it's very easy to get past your fears in any circumstance. So the number one reason right here is whether you're super rich or you're trying to go from poor to successful, your number one thing that you're scared of, every single person, is what other people think of you. Seriously, if you didn't have any friends and no one knew you and you had no family and you had really cheap living expenses that you could easily afford working as a Starbucks barista, what is the downside to failing? Truly think about it. What changes? As long as your rent and everything's covered, and just as a, a quick note, if you cannot generate $10 an hour and you're above the age of 21, you're making some really poor life decisions. And so before you even think about becoming an entrepreneur, you need to address the life decisions that got you to the point where you have absolutely no money to cover anything if you, if you failed. I want to point out that I'm no superstar. I'm no Warren Buffett of savings and responsibility. But since the age of 18, I've never been broke, ever. I've never not had money I've, there's been there's been times where I spent my paycheck and didn't have any money in my bank account, but more money kept coming in. There was never a point where there wasn't any money coming in. And I was a raging drunk. And so if an 18-year-old raging... Actually, I started drinking a whole lot when I was 21. If an 18-year-old, though, who's a drunk and undisciplined can manage to keep himself afloat, you can too. So address why you, you can't do that quite yet. Because those poor decisions and poor discipline are going to chase you in the business I don't have a metaphor for that. I was trying to come up with a clever metaphor. It's just gonna chase you and it's gonna find you. So, here's the thing though. The main reason why people then don't get started, and there's another reason if you have like a family, you have current financial obligations and stuff like that. But the main reason is, what will people think of me? What will my mom and dad think of me? What will my friends think of me? What will people on the internet think of me? And the whole solution right here is that what people think you are is not what you are and how a movie starts is not how it ends if you fail 10 times over 10 years people are like oh i laugh at you and stuff like that but you the, the start is not the finish people that go and try something and try to build something for 10 years usually end off a lot better off than people they go to school and take the safe route safe route they end up doing something they love they end up building something they love and they usually end up a lot more successful so if you go and fail a bunch of times, all you are is a person that took a shot at your dreams and didn't get it the first time. That's, that's literally what you are. 
And you are a person who is experimenting with building your future and your vision. That's what you are. Now to other people, you might be a failure. You might be a whack job. You might be that crazy uncle who's always coming up with the new inventions. But that's not what you are. And if you define yourself by what you think other people think you are, here's you, here's other people. And if you define yourself by what these people think you are versus what you are, you're a fool. Because what other people think you are is the complete opposite of, it's, it's not you. It's not you in the truest sense. They don't have anywhere near the amount of information needed to create an accurate picture of what you really are. And then two, what you view yourself is, is what you are in the truest sense of the word. If you are making a, th a, a thousand bucks a month, but all your needs are covered and you feel rich, you are rich. You are rich. Other people can tell you you're poor compared to so-and-so and so-and-so, but you don't need to compare yourself to so-and-so and so. What you are is what you are. And so it's incredibly imperative that you just stop giving any fucks what people think because it's the definition of irrelevant. And it's a symptom. You can see this. It's, it's plaguing our society. It's an epidemic. You go on Instagram and you don't have to look very far with people standing next to Ferraris and Lamborghinis. I've done this shit. This isn't me talking from don't do as I say and I'm holier than now. I've been there. I know where it comes from. It comes from you trying to define yourself by what you think other people think you are. So at this point in time, when you're going out there, whether you're rich or poor, if you're operating from that, you can't see the truth. You can't move forward. I'm going out there and trying to build a big ass following of people because I want other people to think that I am successful. Because in order for me to feel successful, other people must think I'm successful. That's so dumb. That's so dumb. My life is defined by building cool things. That's what gives me the most happiness. And my definition of life, and I think most other people's, is building things that make you happy. So in those terms, I'm extremely successful whether some 16 year old thinks I'm cool on Instagram. Makes no sense. And it's so illogical if you're getting started to be considering your parents' input, your family's input, or your friend's input. And the same exact thing is going to happen to you whether you're rich or successful right now. The reason why you can't double down on your business and build that big, great thing is because you're restricted by your fear of what other people think. Oh man, I'm making a million dollars a year now. You can't go backwards or people will think you're a loser. They'll think you're a wash up. But that, uh, that fear of going backwards is stopping you from building something great. Do you think Warren Buffett, if you look at Warren Buffett, for example, the guy didn't care what people think. Zuckerberg doesn't care what people think. If you look at John D. Rockefeller, didn't, really didn't care what people thought. And because of that, they didn't spend anything on their lifestyles or creating an image. They weren't restricted by fear of what other people thought. Because of that, they could do insane things because their competitors are trying to split themselves 50-50. 50-50 is controlling what people think of them and trying to create the image of success. And another 50% is focused on being success. Where if you look at Warren Buffett, or you look at Steve Jobs, or you look at Bill Gates, or you look at anyone who's really a billionaire for the most part, besides Donald Trump, <laughs> that's, just, that's just a paradox of a person right there. Uh, and, and don't get political on me. We all know that's true whether you're conservative or a liberal. And, but you got to look at those people like Warren Buffett. He has 0% on creating the image of success and 100% just having success. Who do you think is going to win here? It's this guy. And this is why you see people like this become billionaires. This is why you see people like this become wash-ups. But have a lot of followers on Instagram. Man, they're fucking cool. Ha! Getting bottles at the club. Everybody wants to be these guys. No, nobody wants to be these guys. Wonder why. All right. So, anyways. Wherever you are in life, whether you're rich or poor or starting out, you're going to run into this nasty little creature. And you must be able to spot it. Because that nasty little creature is going to catch you eventually and stop you. So you might as well just stop. Just define yourself by what you think you are. That's it. Nothing, what your girlfriend thinks about you, doesn't matter. What your parents think about you, doesn't matter. If you think you're awesome, congratulations, you're awesome. Because the only person that is ever going to feel your feelings or experience the world is you. Think about it. The only person that's going to experience what you're experiencing right now is you. No one's ever going to experience what you're experiencing. Go, oh man, his experience is better than my experience. You will never experience what other people are experiencing. The only shit experience, the only experience that matters is your experience. So if your experience is that you're awesome and you are building your dreams, that's actually pretty cool. You could just say, oh man, I failed again, but I'm building my dreams and I'm doing what my life's purpose is about. And then suddenly 
There's not- you can't really fail. Because that's what life's about in the first fucking place, you know? Building your dreams and doing stuff that makes you happy. You can't fail, because you're doing your life's purpose. Now, if you go out there and you're trying to influence other people's decisions, and that's how- that influences how you feel about yourself, there's all sorts of ways you can fail. There's all sorts of ways you can fail. And the crazy thing is, you're gonna start working towards your appearance and what other people think of you, versus your life's purpose. It's a real catch-22. Now, once you've addressed that, what's gonna happen with the barbells is if your fear is what other people think, well, guess what? It's really gonna start, the upside's gonna start really appearing right there. The upside is your life's purpose. The downside is the relevant opinion, opinions of irrelevant people. Even if the people are very important to you, their opinion of you still doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. You can want them to like you, and they, sh they will like you. Because you're doing what makes you happy. And so they should understand what makes you happy. And if they don't understand you, why are you really worried about what they think about you? Kind of crazy. Now, the next thing is a little bit more logical. What if I fail <clears throat> and I lose all my financial well-being? Okay, so there's a little bit of fear here if you have kids. I get that. But let's back up here. The easiest way to move forward, for me right now, I've, I've weighed the options of moving into a one-bedroom apartment and living off $1,000 a month just for the sake of having zero attachment to money. Because when that happens, you can get really reckless and aggressive with your business. Because if you fail, there's, there's no, you don't lose anything. There's only upside. Like, for example, if you only need $1,000 a month to live, and you have, let's say, $2 million to screw around with. If you lose that $2 million, it doesn't change anything. There's nothing but upside. So there's a really good book on this called Anti-Fragile, where if you want to go and remove that logical downside in your head, just get rid of all your downside. That's it. So if you're starting a business right now, what you should do is you should remove the downside. You should remove any chance of losing your current well-being if your business fails. And it's not too hard to do. So for example, in the Air Force, I did this very easily by maintaining a job. Okay, and I'll draw, actually draw out the weights. So I had the weights right here, and of course, my logical second thing after I got, I didn't care what people thought. I just got past that very easily because I, I couldn't stay in this. It's like I was on fire, and that'd be the equivalent to worrying if, if my parents would be mad if I put myself out. At that point, it, it was much more important to put myself out, uh, put the fire out. So. What's going on right here is then the logical. Okay, what happens if this business goes down? And so a lot of you guys are scared of the downside. What happens if I go broke? Well, don't go broke. Just, just, it, it, the craziest thing about this is if your business, if you cover your downside, if you operate, you, if you hedge your bets, you can constantly take these really high risk jabs. And eventually one of those high risk jabs is gonna pay off. So for example, if you hedge 90%, of your risk, okay, which would be losing your apartment, would be losing the ability to feed yourself and stuff like that. You can take these really crazy 10% crazy risks that have a thousand percent upside. And so you get the full opportunity to take advantage of these. And the crazy thing about these little 10% high return risk is you have a lot better chance of them paying off because you're controlling it. If you're controlling the business and the work that's going into it, it's not an equivalent outcome. It's not like you're going to Vegas and you have a 90% chance to lose and a 10% chance to win. This 10% right here is just literally your risk to you. But 90% of your risk is covered. So you can just keep taking this shot over and over and over again. And suddenly, you're exposed to all the upside with zero downside. And so that's really easy to get past fear-wise. And so an example of this in my business when I first got started is in the Air Force, what I did is I just kept my job while I was learning how to build a business. And I take extra 200, 300 bucks a month. My rent was covered, and I had about 1,200 bucks a month, I'd say, just to kind of uh, pay for food, general expenses, and then invest in my business. And as long as I lived frugally and wasn't dumb with it, I had money to throw in it. So I just kept taking that 10% risk right there. And it's like being able to go to Vegas, and when you lose, you don't lose. And you just keep, you can just keep spinning the wheel till you win. Eventually, you're going to win. And that right there, logically, just makes total sense. And so. Right now, when I was building my business, the barbell right here, the logical barbell, my downside was very low and the upside was huge. I had a thousand percent upside and 10% downside. So why not keep taking the shots? It became very easy for me to get past the fear of failure financially and logically. And you can keep doing the same thing with your business as well. So for example, 
when I built Market Hero, this is about taking bigger shots once you get going. When I got in the Market Hero and I suddenly realized how to kind of do this, what I did is I used my first business to cash flow. So I was making several hundred thousand dollars a month and then I go and take a lot of that money and then put it into Market Hero and building the team and stuff like that. And I really lost my butt a lot when I was building my main SaaS company that I own right now. I lost my butt a whole lot, didn't know what I was doing, led the team the wrong way, complete mess. But that's the point. At first, yeah, if I'd taken all my money and didn't have any protection, I didn't hedge my bets, I would have lost big. But I just kept taking that mega ROI risk over and over again because I kept covering it. I kept covering it. Yeah, I kept losing money every single month, but it was covered. It was covered. And so I could just go big. And it's just like, all right, cool, whatever. And I just kept going and going and going. And now Market Hero is a pretty successful company. We have an amazing team. We have amazing staff. And everything's going really well. And... The crazy thing is we still have that cash flow coming in. So I can just keep taking more risk and getting more aggressive with it. The second I go out there and make some money at market here, I can just reinvest. I can just, I can just bump up our hard costs to that next point and keep bumping up the hard costs and go all in and go all in because my bets are hedged. This is how you get past this. And that's what you must do. So if you're just starting out, you need to find a way to hedge your bets. You need to go move in a very someplace really cheap. If you have a full-time job right now, go find a place that's 300 bucks a month to live. Are, are, you, are your friends going to think you're nearly successful? No. Are your parents going to approve? Probably not, but, you know, fuck them. And you need to start working on your life's vision, your life goal. And so get some really cheap rent. I lived at th for 300 bucks a month in College Station. I lived off 300 bucks a month in College Station when I got out of the Air Force. No problem. I think I had about 200 bucks a month for food. And yeah, give or take, it wasn't expensive for me to live. And I was able to pay for all that just working as a bar back. And eventually I just quit my bar back job because I was able to just cover the small cost just doing really small, weird freelance stuff online. I didn't quit the bar back job, actually. That's a lie. I got, I got fired. I was terrible, terrible. Can you imagine? I was a bar back slash bouncer. Can you imagine me bouncing? Not, not, it wouldn't work at all. All right. So that's what I did. And then when I was growing my first SaaS company, when I already had my business going, I hedged my bets again. But let's get to the bigger point of what's going on here. <clears throat> the way you can really succeed if you want to be very successful is you must just separate all Fs from money and appearance. And this is hard to do. Okay? Like, I've really weighed this option in my head, like moving into a one-bedroom apartment just so I don't have to worry about money at all. Like there's there, money has no use to me at that point. It's just it's just silly. I can generate a thousand bucks a month easy. So money would have absolutely no purpose. If I lost money, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely worthless to me. All it can be used for is to make more money. And that's kind of a difficult thing to understand. But here's what you gotta think about in terms of this. It's that money has deceived this generation, especially of social media. I think the the Kardashians have broken so many people's brains that doesn't even make sense anymore. And I don't, I don't know if they do that intentionally or not, but people's brains are broken because people are obsessed with wealth and appearance right now. But there's no connection. Is wealth very important? No. There's no connection between being excessively wealthy and happiness. Absolutely zero. It actually gets a lot lower. And as you get richer, you get more paranoid of people. You have to become more secluded. You have to become, and if you're attached to that wealth, you become extremely fearful. Your happiness actually goes substantially down the richer you get. Yeah, sure, you can go rent a yacht around, but you also have to worry about people kidnapping your kids. So there's catch-22s to everything. And you have to have security guards. Like, look at Justin Bieber. The guy can't leave the house without security guards. Can you imagine having some 300-pound man having to wait outside your bedroom door every night as you go to sleep? Can you imagine every single person you meet having to be so skeptical of them, they have to sign papers before they even sit in the same room as you? That sounds awesome, w wonderful. Anyways, there's no connection between wealth and happiness. And the greatest connection studied, and just kumbaya -ish, if you think about it, is working on your life's purpose and your vision and creating something you love and working on what you love every single day and building something that's great. No one wants to build something that's crappy. No one wants to work on stuff they don't love. And so, think about it. If you can go out there and really just hedge your bets against the core things, the core things you need to be happy. Food, shelter, Lamborghinis, just, just kidding. But if you can go and get the essential things, food, shelter, clothes, 
that's not very expensive. It's not very expensive. AC unit in your house. I mean, if you look at people, even people that are on welfare, they live better than kings did 200 or so years ago. Like the average well-being of a person on welfare is a thousand times better than the pharaohs in Egypt. So it's all relevant. Once you have these things covered right here, there isn't much downside. And if you just view these things as essentials, that's the one thing you can't lose. It's very easy to cover this downside. And then you can spend your entire life shooting at the upside. And the thing is, you can only gain here. You can't lose. You can't lose this thing right here. All right, is a Starbucks barista can get these things. So the worst case scenario is if you lose, you go back to being a Starbucks barista for a while and you just keep, you just keep betting on that one in 99 chance. But the most important thing right here is you must think about it. This stuff right here isn't very important past once it's provided by. There is no connection between my Lamborghini and me being happier than you. The reason I might be happier than you is because I wake up and do whatever the fuck I want every single day and work on things I love and enjoy. That's why I'm happier, if I am. There's no guarantee that makes me 100% happier than you either. There's plenty of people who work, make 3,000, 5,000 bucks a month and are way happier than me. Of course, I don't chase happiness. I chase something else and I've talked about that in other videos. That being said, I chase my purpose. And this isn't me being like, be like me. I'm just saying like, I don't understand how a person is happy if they don't chase their purpose, whether it's raising their kids, whether it's, whether it's surfing. I don't know. I don't understand other people very well, as you can tell, but you have a purpose and you have the things that give you reason for being. And the most important thing is chasing you, those. And the most important thing is chasing those. And the crazy thing is, the thing that stops you from chasing those is something that has no connection to your happiness and can be covered with the, mining, the minorest of hedges. If you're getting started, the things that's stopping you from getting started and really going all in, if you're beginning, the thing that's causing you lack of confidence is losing the things that don't actually even matter to you. You are not chasing the thing that's most important to you because you're afraid to lose what's not important to you. This is very Tyler Durden Fight Club. If you have a business right now, the thing that separates mega successful entrepreneurs and ho-hum entrepreneurs is mega successful entrepreneurs have zero attachment to material needs. They just don't care. Go read about John D. Rockefeller. Go read about Warren Buffett. Go read about any of the huge titans of industry. A lot of them, when they get started, the last thing they're thinking about is how they can put their money into like silly stuff or make other people think they appear successful. They're just so in love with what they're doing, they build something insane. And then some of them start going and spending money crazy like and stuff like that. But they're so obsessed with their vision and purpose that there is no downside. There is, there is no downside to it because to them, not working on their vision and purpose is by far the biggest loss they could ever have. And if you start viewing it like that, it's pretty easy to hedge against that. And so once you have that hedged, and you have that belief and view of it, you're no longer afraid. So just do that and stop being afraid.